Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial for facial recognition. We'll be showing you how to make a Siamese neural network model that would be able to identify you against other people. We'll start off with showing you how to use Google Colab. Then we'll step through each of the steps of the project together. Remember that you can find all of the project details as well as the starter code in the description below. Google Colab is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button right here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Ctrl Enter, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell a cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark here. Note, if you get a notice like this saying that the runtime has disconnected, click Reconnect, then run all the cells again. You can run everything again by clicking on Runtime, then Run All. And if you want to run everything up until the cell you are working on, you can click the cell, then click Runtime, then Run Before. You can add cells by clicking on this button on the upper left over here, and delete it by clicking on this trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl M Z on your keyboard. Before we begin, we will need to set up our environment. First, we want to change our runtime to GPU, so that the model will be able to train more quickly. To do so, you can hover over the top left where it says Runtime, then click Change Runtime Type and change it to T4 GPU, then click Save. The code blocks under this section will install and import the dependencies we will be using for this project. For more details on what the code does in this section, you can uncollapse it by clicking on this arrow here. Make sure to run all the code in this section. You can also run them all at once by collapsing them again and clicking on the play button directly underneath. Now we will collect our positive and anchor data. Anchor data serves as a reference point for our comparison, and positive data will resemble the anchor data. If you're using the version with the pre-made dataset, all you need to do for this section is to run all the code blocks. If you would like to use your own images, first make sure that your computer has a webcam, then run these cell blocks. From here, you should alternate between taking anchor and positive images. To do so, you can alternate between pressing A and P. To help your network learn your face better, you can take many pictures of yourself tilting your head, changing the lighting, your clothes and hairstyle, and so on. We want to aim to take 100 pictures each of anchor and positive images. If you would like to check your progress, you can press Q to quit the take photo function and run this cell to see how many anchor and positive images you have. You can then run the cell above it again and continue taking pictures until you have enough. Alternatively, you could also take images of yourself using your phone and upload it to the correct folders in your Google Drive as so. The third section prepares the images for facial recognition. All you need to do here is run this code. The fourth section creates the Siamese neural network model. You can expand these cells for more details on how we create this in code. Otherwise, all you need to do for this section is run everything. Finally, we can start training our model. All these sections in between prepare the network for training. The last section is where we actually train the model. Be patient because this may take a while to run. Now that we've finished training our data, we can now see how accurate our model is. We'll get a batch of test data and make predictions on it using our now trained model. We can print the results and compare it to the actual labels. Zero means that the two images do not match, and one means that they do match. As we can see, the model did quite a good job, since both the y hat and y true values are the same. We can then calculate metrics, such as accuracy, recall, and precision. They should be a value between zero and one, with one meaning it was 100% correct in its predictions, and zero meaning it got everything wrong. We can also see the testing data one by one in this section. Since each batch of testing data is 16 pairs each, we can change this index to be between 0 and 15. If we run this code, we can see that for the first image, the y hat value and the y true value are both 1, meaning that the model classified the two images as a match, and they actually were. If we change this number here and run the code again, we can see that this time the model classified the two images as not a match, and as we can see here, these are clearly not the same people. Now, remember it took some time to train the model? 
If your runtime disconnected, then you have to train the model all over again to continue working on the project. What you can do instead is save the model using this code. All you need to do here is run this code to save it. And the next time you want to work on this project, all you need to do is reload the model using this code. Then we can continue using the model. We can test it on a new batch of test data and even see the architecture of the model. We can also test the model on completely new data. To do this, all you need to do is run each of these cells. On the last one, if you are using the notebook without the data set, you can take a picture of yourself and wait for the function to either say true or false. True would mean that it recognizes you, and false would mean that it does not. Try testing this out with a sibling or other family member to see if the model mistakes another person for you. If the model says false even when it is you, try adjusting the thresholds down if the model says true for a person that is not you, try adjusting the thresholds up to make the model more picky. If you are using the notebook with the dataset, you can look up Tony Blair on a mobile device and hold it up to the camera as so. And with that, we reach the end of this tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions to this project in the description below. And for a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.